Caro, and um, thank you to, to Kat for the invitation to speak at this meeting and also to the um, signers here, which is really fantastic. And I mean, excellent to follow Mel there, and I agree, a really good introduction and, and couldn't um, agree more that to go and look at the report that Mel's been part of producing with Foe and um, Platform, it really is excellent. Um, but obviously Mel's touched on the climate crisis. So I was just going to begin um, really reflecting that we've got multiple of crises at the moment. Um, the climate change clearly, um, the increase of automation and digitalization, the increase of militarization, the global pandemic, COVID pandemic, clearly which has impacted um, all of the world and all which is playing out now in this acute um, global inequality, which has really been highlighted um, as if people didn't realize it didn't exist before, but by the pandemic. And of course, these are global problems which require cooperation, collective action, and at the heart, an agenda for peace, because we can't solve these in a, a warmongering agenda. But responses to these and how we are told to understand security in today's context is of course rooted in questions of power based on the elite vested interests of competition, racism, oppression to serve the interest of a few or the proverbial 1%. And the world is in a dangerous place with events and announcements from the UK government just over the past week doing nothing to ensure that we can feel more secure in our communities, in our workplaces, and above all, in addressing the challenges before us at a global level. So for one example, this week, the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill, um, which fortunately has been delayed, but it's still there and we must continue to campaign against that. Um, as has already been mentioned, the integrated review of security, defense, development, and foreign policy, um, and already articulated the announcement, including the increase of Britain's nuclear stockpile by 40%, which I think for most of us really was a surprise um, from where that has come from. And of course, the billions of increase in investment in military spending compared to investment in people and communities to address the challenges we face. It's not just immoral and a slap in the face to the NHS workers in the face of the 1% pay offer but an absolute dereliction of duty of this government towards its people and people around the world. And from a trade union and working class perspective, where our duties of security are rooted in the protection of workers' rights, jobs, and international solidarity, it's equally indefensible when some unions welcome increased defense spending as a manufacturing jobs opportunity. And I think we have to put that out there because unions have welcomed the defense review this week and of course real job security will come in defining and demanding jobs for a transition to a zero carbon economy we desperately desperately need and which is rooted in rebuilding our public services and socially useful production and this was a vision um, which we can learn from from the lucas aerospace workers in the 1970s who elaborated an alternative corporate plan in the face of redundancies due to capitalization and automation of their work. And 50% of the work that they did was on contracts from, from government for um, the arms industry. But working with their unions across Lucas Aerospace plants, the workers formed a shop stewards combine and collectivize their skills and knowledge to elaborate a plan based on socially useful production. And what they looked at was the things that were lacking in society. Um, for example, kidney machines. They thought we can build um, weapons for war and killing people, but we don't have the basic means within our communities to actually maintain and help people's lives. So central to their plan was the understanding that technology is political. Um, and as I said, a conscious assessment that working in an industry that could destroy life, they could repurpose their skills to make things that made people's lives more secure by making things people need. So I've mentioned kidney machines, but wind turbines and accessible transport, for example. 
And it's quite shocking when we think today in our discussions around energy transition and renewable sector that these were all ideas being discussed long ago. But it was the kind of vision and ambition we urgently need to deploy today. Um, and we also within that need to recognize the abilities and skills of workers as, as part of you know, what we are calling the just transition. Because despite being told that we cannot transition our economy at the pace and scale required to address particularly the climate crisis, Clearly in the pandemic, it showed us that we can quickly repurpose production lines for human needs, as happened in the ventilators challenge and for the personal protective equipment. And this was all done at speed and a pace. And of course, with the vaccines in the way that the vaccines um, have come on board in such a short period of time. So we, we have the means and ability there to do it. Of course, it also showed us in this time jobs which are important to our existence and human security and not those involved in arms manufacture, despite the irony that in many countries, arms manufacture was retained as a priority area to keep open during the lockdowns and including um, aerospace in the UK. Um, but as a wider just transition to protect workers as we move from a fossil fuel to a green economy, we are also advocating for the establishment of a defence diversification agency that will deal with the specifics of the defence sector in economic conversion and ensure areas wholly dependent on defence work are central to discussions in establishing the jobs needed for a decarbonised and peaceful world. And the reason why we separate this out, it's part of the wider industrial strategy and just transition process, but because of the specifics within defence, we still think that there needs to be a separate element within that conversation um, to establish the, the skills and transition of those jobs and those areas which are really, as we term it, company towns. So I think just in closing, um, for those that are calling right now in obviously the hopefully transformational events we've been seeing in the past few weeks around the protests and the reactions to Sarah Everard's um, Death, um, the Black Lives Matters movement last year as well, and the call to defund the police. Um, and as they rightly say, our security lies in refunding our communities through public services and meaningful work. So we echo that call that we need to defund defense, ban nuclear weapons, and investment in the arms industry and jobs producing bonds that are killing our working class sisters and brothers in countries such as Yemen and build at the industrial level and in society more broadly for a new Lucas plan for sustainability, security, and solidarity. I'll finish there. Thank you.